building has its foundations, the universe too has its basic truth. And that truth is that there is one source of all life. It is the truth of truths. Each man lives to find that truth in himself. For this great truth lies in every man. But even as electricity has always existed, its laws must be studied before it can be used in life. And as these towers record, man can only find truth through taking action, but his own action. For it is said, better one's own act, though imperfectly performed, than the act of another, well performed. And it is that act which has the greatest power, says the Gita. But the action must be for itself, with no concern for the rewards of action. And the means must be right, or the ends will not be right. And the only right means to a true action is through love. For only if you love all that lives, be it the man, a tree, or an animal, can you find the power in it. As it is inscribed on the towers, good and evil both exist in all that is. But if you love, you strengthen the good in those near you, not the evil. Thus truth and love are the greatest forces on earth. And Gandhi was to call their use by the laws of love with scientific precision work greater wonders And in London, too, he read the Sermon on the Mount. And the Gospel of India and the Gospel of the West seemed touched for him with the same great light. For the Sermon on the Mount also said, But I say unto you, resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And he remembered the millions of India as he read, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. These ideas and these people brought together by Gandhi created one of the greatest forces of the human spirit ever seen. These gentle ideas had existed for a long time. Many had believed them. Gandhi's performance was remarkable in that he was now to lead an entire nation in acting on them. As a graduate lawyer, he returned to India, was sent to South Africa, rose to great success and wealth. By 1912, when the great Indian leader, Gokhale, whom Gandhi called my political teacher, came to spend a month in South Africa, Gokhale reported to the people in India, not on Gandhi the lawyer, but on a Gandhi who had a marvelous spiritual power to turn ordinary men into heroes and martyrs. And that here in Gandhi was a coming leader for India, with a new weapon called non-violence, which Gandhi was using successfully to fight South African discrimination against Indians. over the country. Crowds came to hear him tell of the new force, this non-violent resistance. And as he went all over India, he saw its restlessness that could be used for good or evil. He saw the great human energy waiting to be used for good or evil. Changes were in the making. Malavia, seen with Gandhi, had founded the great Benares University. Gandhi met Jawaharlal Nehru for the first time in 1916. And at Sabamati, near the mill town of Ahmedabad, started a center called an ashram. Here in such a center, people came to live with a man whom they felt had a special truth they wanted to see in action. Here now came those who wanted to observe and follow Gandhi's way of nonviolence. 
For to be non-violent, Gandhi felt took a special discipline. The restlessness in India was growing. A tragic event increased its violence. Here in this now peaceful spot, General Dyer lined up troops in the only entrance and fired into a meeting of 20,000 peaceful Indians meeting there. Against a misunderstood order, 379 died. 1,133 were wounded. But the deepest wound was to India's self-respect. Tagore, the great Indian poet, Gandhi's great friend, cried out, Freedom from fear is the freedom I claim for you, my motherland. Tilak, the Indian leader of the Congress party, died August 1st, 1920. The streets were packed at his funeral. Crowds honored his superb but violent spirit. But Tilak, who had believed violent action could free India, recognized as his political heir the non-violent Gandhi. The Congress Party, begun in 1885 as a move toward self-government, now met all over India once a year, and now was the central force in the fight for independence. It began with a ceremonial parade, led by animals whose number was the number of the Congress, 52 bullocks, the 52nd Congress. Thousands walked on foot hundreds of miles to these meetings, carrying their own food, sleeping without shelter. 53 elephants, the 53rd Congress. For here at these meetings, they could see their leaders surge out to touch them. The fire in them would be met by the fire in the leaders. At times, all parties met together. But the Central Committee, the All India Congress Committee itself, was made up of 350 members, representative of every town and province. The Working Committee, central in planning and organizing, 15 members. Among the leaders who were to work most closely with Gandhi were Motilal Nehru, father of Jawaharlal Nehru, an extremely wealthy man who lived here. A man of superb integrity, who gave his money, his energies, and finally his life for Indian freedom. There was Abdul Ghaffa Khan in the center, leader of the huge warlike Patan, the wise Raja Gopalachari, Mrs. Naidu, a poet and friend of Gandhi from the World War I London days. Bose, who eventually was to oppose Gandhi. And there was Jawaharlal Nehru to be first premier of the new India. Here with the Muslim Azad, who worked for Muslim Hindu unity in the Congress. while the young Muslim Jinnah was here at the beginning of his career. There was Patel to be Deputy Prime Minister called the strong man of India. There was Prasad from Bayar walking beside Nehru. But their leader now was Gandhi. Fervently he spoke at the Congress meetings of the program for a new India of the use of nonviolence. Nonviolence was a great force. It had its own laws. They must be followed scrupulously. The basis of all great changes in government came not with changes in law, but in men's hearts. Men had a more profound need to love and to be loved than to hate and be hated. The power for good in a man or government should be aroused, not the power for evil. In 1921, he began simply with spinning. All over India, speakers began to repeat his message. India grew all the cotton it needed. Indians were unemployed half the year. Why send the cotton to the English mills? Why not spin their own clothes? Industry would eventually mean home rule. 
thus began the cardi or homespun movement.